Hi, I'm Professor Alex Duhas, and this is thankfully my last video for my course Learning from YouTube, which I taught in the fall of 2007 to 30 students at Pitzer College. The course was a wild experiment in education where I asked my students to think in real time about a current cultural phenomenon, one that is unfolding rapidly, a cultural phenomenon that is really rethinking and remaking how media is distributed, consumed, um, and the role of media in people's lives. The students were asked to do all of their research in YouTube, to turn in all of their assignments as YouTube videos or comments, and all of our courses were put onto YouTube making the course available to public scrutiny. A lot of what made the course experimental made it really stressful for me. It was a really hard course to teach. I will say at this point that I think it was a successful course, but I wanted to quickly highlight four things that made the course hard in relationship to um, my job as a teacher. The first was that, as I said, it was student-led. I thought that my students could do a better job thinking through this contemporary cultural phenomenon than I could. But um, in fact, it turns out that students like don't particularly want, or nor is it necessarily their role, to take on that much leadership uh, in a classroom environment. We got a huge amount of media attention at the beginning of the semester, and that added to all of our stress and certainly to mine. I don't think it helped us in any way other than that it was a good lesson for my students given that YouTube itself is organized around this kind of mad search for popularity and for media attention and I think that we learn relatively quickly that just because people are looking at you and cameras are turned on you doesn't mean that they understand you or that they're listening to you or that they care about what you're doing. Um, the limits of YouTube made the course extremely hard and I would say there's a lot of videos on our site about what those limits are but very quickly. It's very hard to find things on YouTube. It's very hard to have a community on YouTube. It's hard to organize a community. And it's hard to build things because it's hard to link things. And that made the kind of rigorous work and communal work of higher education really hard when we were using its pages. Finally, um, I had to make a lot of videos during <laughs> this class. I promised that I would post them. And this is my last one. Um, and it's been stressful to get these together to uh, be as coherent as possible and um, to um, know that they're being viewed in the public, which is true for my students as well, which is why I put myself um, up for that assignment. Um, that said, I have also been blogging about the class and uh, well, although these are my last words on YouTube about the class, I hope that you'll turn to my blog to, to learn further about some of my thoughts once it's all kind of settled down. I wanted to make five quick points about what I think we've learned from YouTube, or certainly what I've learned from YouTube or from my class learning from YouTube this semester. And the first two have to do with this video and how bad, bad this video is in relationship to the logic of YouTube. The logic of YouTube creates a new media form that's organized around speed and efficiency and the language we've used in the course, the summary. And I am going to try and summarize here, but part of what I do as a professor is speak in lengthier sentences, and allow my thoughts to flow. So um, this is not the kind of video that does well on YouTube if what we count by doing well is getting large numbers of hits. So speed efficiency and, su and, and summarizing are important to YouTube videos as are humor, or as is humor. And this is also not a funny video. The uh, flip side of humor on YouTube videos is sincerity. And that's usually sincerity about a personal experience or some kind of personal knowledge that the um, uh, filmmaker is expressing straight to the camera. And that is also not what I'm doing here. The, attempt to communicate a hard set of ideas with some kind of logical order is typically not the structure of a YouTube video. Uh, so I will fail at that as well. Thirdly, I guess this video will fail in that what I've learned from my students and what I've learned from YouTube is that popularity is a fundamental organizing structure um, for the site and that's both 
in its corporate structure and also in the vast majority of people's experience of what they view and what they want from the site. And it's certainly clear to me, as it was when I began, but probably more clear, that this searching for popularity leads to a kind of mediocrity um, of vision, mediocrity of form, mediocrity of content, which to me is probably the most unsettling thing to have learned about this new new form of media, one that radically democratizes access to production and distribution. And yet what we see is that the vast amount of content refers to, reproduces, is interested in mainstream culture. And what uh, Steve, the employee of YouTube who came to our class, called the logic of crowds. Now, what I would note about that logic um, is that it creates a kind of insincere and ironic or glib relationship to culture, and also one that's relatively immature and apolitical. So that for something to be popular, it needs to be mediocre, it needs to kind of run down the middle, it needs to not insult people, um, and it probably isn't that good. Uh, there, there's a certain amount of talent that is needed to produce things that rise up and above the noise, but the talent is in producing things that are uns that are not unsettling to viewers. So, in effect, this is my fourth point: what YouTube has quickly become, and this is par also primarily because of its corporate ownership and the imperative of corporations to make money. Um, it has just become a glorified television set selling us exactly the same kinds of advertisements and media that we already had on our television sets, except for faster, slicker, more humor, more sincerity, with more summaries. Um, and that is unfortunate, but not surprising, given the corporate imperative behind this tremendously exciting new media form. This big TV which is YouTube, is also organized, we learn in the class, by mob rule and by a form of self-censorship that YouTube supports. This, is fun this fundamentally means that there's a policing that occurs that is more or less organized around the most, again, I guess I'd say mediocre, mainstream, middling ideas of the culture so that everything that falls to the outsides of the norms is suspect and is very easy to remove. And this leads me to my fifth point. It is absolutely true that there is a second world on YouTube, a niche world, a world of micro-communities, a world of outliers who are producing radical culture, radical ideas, new ideas, new forms, that is really outside the logic of YouTube is not well supported on its pages. And it's probably true that anyone who wants to do that needs to find another community that is better suited for that kind of work, for the work of ongoing, committed conversation, for the work of connections, for the work of ideas and human beings building in relationship not to something easy, easy to take in, easy to see, easy to understand, but for things which are hard. And that's the conclusion. YouTube is not a good place for learning, although we learned a lot there, because the work that we do in higher education is that hard niche work, asking the harder questions, saying things that are hard to hear that need to be said, having opinions, building ideas, and holding on to the terrain that is slipping away as corporate culture and mainstream culture takes up more of our time and energy, feeds us in ways that are insubstantial, that make us crave more, and don't satisfy our real needs as human beings, our needs to be political, our needs to know each other, our needs to self-express, our needs to change what doesn't work, our needs to 
name the specific things in our own experiences that do. So um, I'm not certain I'll ever do this again, but it was a wild ride. And for those of you who've paid attention, thanks a lot.